So I dug a project out of the weeds today and actually made some headway for once. I have had this, it's a Cadillac. It is a 1971, I think. Uh, should be 14 feet long. I think it's 60 inches wide. And it was my uncle's boat. And this boat sat on the shore of Lake Huron, upside down on the beach for probably 20 years and nobody touched it. And when he sold the house, I asked him for it and I bought it from him. And it, I used it quite a few times to go fishing and whatnot. And it's a, an extremely stable boat. It works great in Lake Huron, no problems at all. Um, and then I had a kid and then I stopped doing a lot of things that I did before. So it was time to re or re resurrect the Cadillac, which obviously needs some new MC numbers and whatever. Um, maybe rolling dirty a little bit there. The other part of the project, which the boat is fine, the other part of the project is this trailer. Ignore the mess. Messes are common around here. Uh, and I know what somebody's saying another project. Yes, I will finish all of them. I just haven't lived long enough to finish all my projects. So this is yet another project, but we're going to crank this out, I think, as fast as we can because it's going to be a great fall uh, fall toy. So what I want to do, and I've wanted to do this for a very long time, this trailer is from, it was like a 23 or 24-foot um, uh, Four Winds fiberglass boat. And my dad found the boat from a guy who was trying to get rid of it, and we cut it up and recycled or threw away or whatever you have to do with fiberglass. I think it actually got ground up into something useful. Um, but that is now gone, and we sold all the guts out of the boat. And now this trailer survives as the trailer for this boat. And yes, it is way too big for this boat by purpose. Today, first of all, we put the boat in the water and ran a four-horse uh, Yamaha from probably, I think it's like 81 or 83 or 82 or something like that. We, um, we got in the water, we ran about an hour and a half and had a bunch of fun today on the boat. Um, worked great, obviously a four horsepower pushing a boat this big is not very fast. Um, it probably went eight or nine, maybe, on a good day. Uh, I think that this boat is probably gonna need to have a 25 to really do something with itself, or 30 if I could find it. But for right now, I'm happy to go putz around. This project is not the boat or the motor. I have envisioned this or dreamed of this project for ever since I got this boat and then ever since my dad found the boat that was on this on this trailer. I want to make a all-in-one travel up north, go hunting, whether it was bear hunting or deer hunting, duck hunting, uh, a way to access or whether it was camping, a camping trip, um, or just fishing, just even a fishing trip, or go to um, like... Ontario or, or northern, uh, middle northern uh, Saskatchewan, a boat to go whether it be hunting or fishing or just in general go have a good time and a trailer that I can bring a four-wheeler on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a 50-inch wide, 80-inch wide or long, so I guess 50-inch long in this case and 80 inches wide, flat deck up front that a four-wheeler will go on. I will be extending the front of the tongue slightly to, uh, by also improving it and taking that two inch receiver off and putting a Demco um, two and five sixteenths heavy duty hitch on so I can go to a two and five sixteenths and also get just a smidgen more so that when I have, here's the line right here of where the structure is gonna start. So I can have a little bit more room so when the tailgate of my truck goes down, I have enough room to turn. So I want to run with a four-wheel drive quad on the front. So it's going to be about 1,000 pounds on the front of the trailer, but I drive three-quarter ton and one-ton truck, so I'm not worried about that. And that's why there's going to be a heavy-duty hitch on there. And then what I would like to do is build basically a ladder rack on the trailer. So up and up and up and up and a flat deck on top. By a flat deck, what I think it's literally going to be is a, uh, a ladder rack and a couple supports going across so that I can put a, a rooftop tent on the trailer and also have a load surface to put things for trips, whether it's decoys or whether it's, um, you know, strapping down camping gear or whatever. I want to have a do it all, go anywhere. And the cool thing is, is that when you get there, you can take your four wheeler off and hook it to the trailer and tow it deeper into the woods or deeper down a two track to a boat launch or a river launch or whatever. So I kind of envisioned this or I've dreamed of it as a way to access places that I wouldn't either normally be able to get to, or I'd have to bring a bigger trailer with more junk or whatever. I wanted to make one trailer that did a lot of stuff. 
This should be a 3,500 pound axle. I don't think I'll have any trouble with the strength of the trailer. The strength of the trailer is substantial. This, um, this front part looks to be eighth inch three by two. Actually, three by, it's three wide, so it's probably four inches tall. Three by four, that is plenty strong. I'm gonna have no problem putting a four-wheeler on that. We're going to, when we extend the hitch slightly, and yes, that is an old Dacron sail from a sailboat that is gonna be turned into a boat cover. Probably a boat cover for this, or a boat cover for the Sullivan, but we'll see. We're gonna make little triangulations that are gonna go out to the wings to help keep any issue from tipping side to side. And then we're probably gonna continue them back and make a little load floor right there too to put coolers, to lash down coolers, or to come home with, um, you know, game or whatnot, extra coolers, I guess, with game in it, you could say. I kind of envision this as they go out west or go north to the UP or into Canada and go do some really fun activities in the future. And like I said, I've kind of dreamed of doing this for a long time. The whole combination of boating, four-wheeling, and camping is kind of my home away from home. That's what I like to do with my, my extra spare time, I found, is trail riding, and I love boating. So this project is right up my alley. So what did we start today? Now this used to be full height. The piece is actually right there. This used to be full height, and that's been chopped down so that we have a nice vertical portion right here so that um, I measured from there to over there for the 50 inches. And then we, we move this forward, first of all. This was here for the longer boat. This has been moved forward, and yes, this is very janky. Don't worry about it. This and this is going to get replaced. Don't worry about that. Uh, we lowered this down to obviously line all this up. We move that wheel forward. I do have to weld that because the U-bolt setup for this is too skinny for the wider. See how it goes into a neck or a bigger piece of material? This isn't gonna fit over top of it anymore. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply put a little welding bead. A little welding bead right there for the roller. I adjusted these two front rollers. So now that, now this boat fits perfectly on here. And I did bias it so that it is hanging off a smidgen, and this is the, that's the piece. Now we are hanging off just a smidgen. No worries, that'll be fine. We don't have any issues, even if we put some weight in here. And I was literally washing the boat today because it was a little bit gnarly, so we didn't take on that much water. And also, it's only dirty because the boat was a little scuzzy. But I lift up on the, you know, I'm pulling up on the boat and it's not tipping over. So now obviously we will have a heavier motor on there and I would like to make a provision for a transom saver so that I don't, when I put a better motor on this thing, um, which I think the biggest outboard I have is a, uh, I think my grandpa's outboard is a 15. And I don't think we, we put a, we had a 15 Evan Root on this and it didn't do anything. So it's got to be bigger than that for it to be truly able to go on plane at speed. It is a pretty big, wide, heavy John boat, if you want. So more power is going to be needed, so I'll need to procure a 25 or a 35 or a 30 or whatever I can come up with. And because of trips like this and also considering laws in different places about two strokes, I will probably be putting a four stroke on this simply so I don't have to worry about it. And on trips, I don't have to worry about mixing. I don't have to think about it. If I, if I uh, you know, have an issue where I'm on a trip and water gets into my fuel tank, I can dispose of the fuel, put new fuel in. I don't have to worry about not having enough two-stroke to mix a whole tank. I can just put new fuel in. So yeah, I'm pretty sure this is going to go to a four-stroke. And the other thing is for just pollution in general in places that you want to try and protect and whatever. I love two-strokes. They're amazing. They're super duper smooth. That engine is super reliable and super smooth. But I think we're going to go to a four-stroke. If I was to get a new motor for this, I think it's going to be a four-stroke because then I just put fuel in it and go. No questions, no worries. And at this point, a minimal weight increase compared to two-stroke. Four-strokes have gotten pretty good. So I will be looking into that. If anybody has any recommendations on Suzuki, Mercury, Yamaha. I mean, that's a Yamaha, but I also own Evernrude's. An Evernrude, a Johnson, 
and a Mercury. So, and the Mercury is not going to be, it's a very nice motor. It's a long shaft 9.9. .9. Not going to be ideal for this application. Too low horsepower, too long a shaft. So we're probably going to stick with a short shaft because to have the minimum amount of depth and more horsepower. So yeah, so a little bit of a background if you like the idea of this project. I don't know that I've ever seen anybody do this specifically before. Um, if any of you have done a build like this, let me know. Find a way to communicate, and I'm not sure if... Well, I put my email in every video that I've posted. I'm gonna, I have put my email in it. So if anybody wants to send me pictures of their build, that'd be sweet. I'd love to see it. Anybody, uh, I, I, if anybody's seen anybody do something like this, four-wheeler, storage areas, and a ladder rack for above storage, potentially rooftop tent on top of a boat trailer. I don't think I've ever seen it before. I envision the one annoying thing is going to be packing up your rooftop tent to put your boat in the water. So a way around that might be to when you get to wherever you're going, put the boat in first and tie it up to the bank. Or if there's a dock off to the, out of the way, or like I said, just beach it and tie it to a tree would be the way to go. So that way you don't have to disturb your, your tent when you're doing that. So that's kind of the one annoying thing I could see about this. But I don't, I don't envision there being, um, you know, too big of annoyances with this. You know, loading and unloading should be pretty simple. If you're hurt or something like that, you could just undo the winch and then get in the water, hook the winch line up and crank it up, no effort. I will personally not have any trouble grabbing the boat and dragging it out of the trailer um, unless I'm physically hurt, in which case that's what the winch is for. So I can't envision that being a, an issue. I will need to build ramps to get a four-wheeler up onto this, and they can be pretty short because the only thing I'm going to put on this is a four-wheel drive four-wheeler. So it can be very steep and probably minimum construction. Being that this is eighth wall, I'm not sure that I have any eighth wall two by two because I would probably do two by two verticals, and I'm not sure that I need to have quarter wall. Um, and especially considering the advantages of quarter wall tend to go away when you then have to weld it to eighth, unless you gusset the snot out of it because you're welding eighth to quarter and therefore your weakest link is the eighth. So, you know, the ladder rack is gonna be shaped like a U. And if you did do quarter, you're probably not gonna have to worry about anything above. And yes, my hands are dirty from working on the trailer. That's why they're dirty, so sorry. Um, but attaching it to the trailer is going to be the weak link. And therefore, you know, I'm going to, and, and weight is obviously a consideration. I don't think we're going to be anywhere near concerned about weight with 3,500 pound axle. I doubt this boat weighs more than, what do you guys think? 300 pounds? And we got a guess on how much a, you know, a boat with this much freeboard, 60 inches wide, um, you know, 14, inch, 14 feet long. I can't imagine it weighs that much. You know, 300 pounds, I think that's probably it. That motor weighs nothing. I can carry that around, throw it around. A bigger motor, a 30 or 25 four-stroke, I thought weighed 50 or 60 pounds, I seem to think, but I could be could be wrong on that. Not really sure. I guess I haven't really looked into it too hard, but I do know that I think that that's the direction that I'd go for simply for simplicity. And if I'm, you can't buy a new two-stroke. And I do have several older, um, I do have several older two-strokes, so... I would be more apt to just use them, even if they're not enough horsepower, I guess. So if I'm going to buy new, I'm going to buy, or if I'm going to buy something that I don't already have, I'm going to get exactly what I want, is I guess what I'm trying to say. Roundabout way of saying that. So I think this looks really good. I, I used a porta band on that, and that was entirely by eye. It's pretty good. And I wanted to have that flat in case I wanted to construct anything on there. I'm going to, I'm going to cover it, I'm going to weld it, and I'm going to cap it so water doesn't get in there. And that should look quite good. We, we may find a way to use that for something. I don't really know off the top of my head what that might be. But we're going to cap it flat. And that way, if we wanted to use that for anything, we can. So I don't really envision any problems with this. It's going to be a really simple, um, you know, cross over the top. Rooftop tents require, usually, uh, you can mount them onto a couple, um, you know, cross beams going across. Because they have their own structure. So my plan, I think, is going to be a front going across, a rear going across, tying them two together, just like a ladder rack, and then probably um, 
probably two um, or one adi one additional in the middle, I think, and then or two, potentially two, so that way we could have a front load storage area to put stuff. So, if anybody is intrigued by this project, let me know, um, because I am really excited to do it. The camper, still waiting, if anybody watched that, and yes, that was another one of my bright ideas, still working on trying to find out uh, the guy that I was really, when I made that video, I was really jazzed. I talked to a guy down in, um, I think it was Tennessee, that a custom trailer place. And I was really jazzed because I found almost what I wanted with 8K axles. Um, a, um, but it was a 28 by 8.5. And, and I think that th I went out and did some measuring. I may even ask for a 36 by 8.5 just to make sure that I do it once and do it right. Uh, because the trailer, I got to do something with the trailer. It, the outside is deteriorated to a point where I don't want to start ruining the inside and make it to a point where I gut it now and then find something else to put it in later. And I hate to clog up the shop with stuff. Not that it isn't already clogged up with stuff that isn't done. <laughs> what, do you, what do you guys want to see me do with that thing? That was bought to body swap this wonderful piece of equipment that I have. Um, this was a, a flood truck from Florida. It wasn't really a flood truck. What actually happened was some dingleberry accidentally nosed it over into a... Um, a ditch or something because you can see the mud line that's on an angle interior is perfect doesn't smell bad electronics worked engine was locked up uh broke a rod it was a really interesting time getting the crank to finally or to take apart what i could get at and reach the nuts to get all the pistons out so that i could get the crank undislodged and that was a fun one it wasn't as bad as my 454 though that i built from the jet boat that somebody launched before I got it. That was a lot worse than this was to get apart, but I did rebuild that motor's five stone Hemi. I would kind of like to make this a street truck. It's two wheel drive. It would be really cool to make a sleeper out of this thing. Um, you know, it's funny. A lot of YouTubers get projects as they grow their channel for their channel. <laughs> I already had a bunch of projects, so the best thing I could ever have happen is to have the YouTube channel keep growing. So if you're still watching this, please remember to hit like and subscribe if you liked it. And if you would subscribe, I'd appreciate it. Comment down below and look into the community tab on my YouTube channel and you can comment questions in there. You can also email me if you want to. And also I have a Patreon, which will be in the description as well. So cool. If you stuck around this long, leave a comment and let me know you stuck around this long. I appreciate you guys. Take care of yourselves. And I'm going to keep trudging along in my projects and hopefully get to use them. Hopefully you guys had a safe, fun, happy Labor Day. And I hope you have a safe time at work this week. And you have maybe, I hope, even better that you have a boss or a work environment that gently allows you to come back to work after having a break from work. Uh, I hope that they're decent to you and don't just um, uh, saddle you with miserable amounts of work as a punishment for getting your your time off. So I hope you had a good time and that you come home and you have a somewhat more relaxing time as you transition back into your work week. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. See you later.